I guess I can start with asking, um, do you guys even know what I do? Does that even resonate with anyone? So, um, so I do get that a lot. Like I, I get a lot of, well, I don't quite understand what it is that you do. Do you do web design? Do you do content creation? Do you do web development? Well, I don't really do any of that. I do a little bit of everything. And so what I usually say is I am a user advocate, which again, I still get blank stares and kind of like, what the hell are you talking about? But I usually get smiles and nods, which is a polite way of saying, can you please go deeper and explain what exactly it is that you do? So maybe what I'll do is I'll give, um, I'll tell a story. So imagine 100 years ago when we gathered in smaller groups and shared stories. And so a storyteller could shape the way they share their information by looking at the audience and gathering cues. Cues through their body language, their um, facial gestures, and kind of either go faster if, they look, if the audience looks like they're getting bored, or maybe add a little bit of flair to their stories by adding some whispering or by maybe shouting to make a point. So we've lost some of that in the modern day. We get a lot of feedback through retweets, shares, likes, but that happens after the fact. And so that's where my team comes in. So I am the bridge, me and my team. We serve as the bridge between the audience and the storyteller. So we minimize obstacles that, we minimize obstacles to engagement during the story creation. And I think that that is the key. It's during the time that content is being produced. And we do this through a number of things. We understand our competitors, so we do a bunch of competitive analysis. We engage our users through audience interviews. We do some usability testing and A-B testing. And then we use those findings to lay the foundation or the groundwork for what will be the interface that the end user interacts with. So we organize the content, we go ahead and create flows. So we show the interaction model and how to get from users from point A to point B and feel good about doing that. And so throughout this whole process, we think about the how. How do we communicate the story that resonates to the end user? And so we have a word for that within my team and it's called sense making. So sense making gives meaning to an experience. And as an aside, it's not a term that we made up ourselves, although it would be cool if we took credit for it because I think it's a pretty cool word. But it's actually, uh, it comes from a book that we all read um, called uh, Time of Clarity. So don't quote me on that, I'll get the real title of that. But um, our team actually has its own book club and nerdy as it is, that was our book for the month. So um, sense making is really a triangulation of three things. It's understanding the audience, meaning their behaviors, their sentiments. Um, it is understanding technology, so what's available now, what will be in the near future, and what's like what I call the Star Trek technology, like way far in advance, and really think about its applications to an interface and to the user. And so the third thing is the timing. So the timing is key, right, understanding when the audience is ready for whatever technology is you, that you want to use to help enhance your storytelling. And so we've seen storytelling evolve over time across different mediums. As technology becomes more available to the masses, we've learned to adapt how to share information. And so that's where Harvest of Change comes in. Are you guys familiar with this? Did you guys see it at all at ONA? Okay, so maybe I will explain a little bit. Um, Harvest of Change is a partnership between Gannett Digital and the Des Moines Register. So the Register had this really intriguing story about um, showing how farmers are evolving with the changes that are happening economically, um, socially, and climate changes, and how they have to adapt to those in their farming um, and through their lives, I guess. And so what they wanted to do, though, was also reach a broader audience, not just the Iowa community. And so that's where Gannett Digital comes in. We came in to give them a platform that 
helped enhance the experience that they wanted to convey through the story that they wrote. And through this, we wanted to do it through 360 video and VR to give that immersive feeling. Profound change is sweeping across America fast. Meet the Dominus, sixth generation farmers at the epicenter. Step inside their world with unprecedented visual storytelling. Look around, look all the way around. This is a 360 degree experience. They've beaten adversity to help feed the world for more than a century, but the scope of change may be their biggest challenge yet. So this is sort of an example of um, autoplay and video views. So those are some of the business requirements that I have to work with that then I have to try to marry with editorial requirements. Then I have to think about the user and then how will they feel about all these things and what's the right way to convey. So anyway, that was a little bit of that. Um, so why VR? Why VR for the harvest of change? Because again, I, as I mentioned before, um, we wanted to be able to complement the story, right? We wanted to be able to complement um, what it is that the register wanted to convey, the feeling that they wanted to give to their user. And so we thought that VR and immersive video would do, would do just this. Um, we thought that the audience was there. And so we tried to reach, or we're trying anyway, to reach an audience or this generation that basically has lived life not knowing what it's like to be without a computer, right? They know what it's like to play video games. In fact, my daughters, that's all really they do. In fact, they're on spring break and they're probably playing video games now. And so this type of interface is not something new to them. It might be a little scary maybe to us who aren't part of this generation, but again, in order for us to grow, we need to reach this new um, set of people. And so we thought that, again, back to sense making, the audience is ready, the technology there is there, and the timing is just right. And so what's next? Um, as this drawing shows, I don't know. And I say I don't know because I think that there are lots of opportunities. It sort of feels like um, anything goes and anything is possible, and I'm really excited that that is the case. So we're at the point where we can shape Again, we can shape the way we want to tell our stories to reach our audience and try to make that connection with them. That's it. Thank you. Um, questions from around the room. I'll run up to the back. Great presentation. Um, I, could you speak to analytics within Harvest yes. of Change? So we actually really do a lot of um, understanding the data. So that part does not come within our team. We actually work with our business intelligence group. Um, and so our job is to really understand the why behind the data. So why, for example, are, you know, why is this story trending for the past two days and then all of a sudden it dips and then it goes back up? So that really is what we do. It's not only you know, the sort of the research that um, we conduct and the qualitative, but it's also the quantitative in um, coupling that together. Can you talk a little bit about social strategy? We talk about social strategy, but I know, and you mentioned your kids, my kids consume completely different platforms in completely different ways that frankly, some, some of them I'm really struggling to catch up with. And what that means for your position in terms of being a news organization trying to reach particularly sure. millennials and that yes. next group that follows them. Um, in fact, we're actually doing that right now. So again, I go back to understanding the audience and really being in touch with them. And for us, it really is talking to them and really trying to see like observing their behavior, right? And, uh, and I say that, um, you, you know, some people roll their eyes because we're observing their behaviors in a lab, right? So really how true is that? But really after about five, 10 minutes, they feel comfortable and they kind of act the way they usually act. And so we prod them, we ask them questions, we just simply observe them in, in the things that they don't do, we note. Um, and through that, we try to understand 
what experiences are actually applicable. Because the one thing that I do want to say is just because something is cool doesn't mean it makes sense to use, right? So, um, you know, like with VR, for example, there are some things that maybe it's not appropriate either content-wise or the audience just wouldn't necessarily engage in that medium. So that's, that's sort of my answer. Can you talk about your stereoscopic 360 video? Who shot that and how difficult was that to get? Um, they actually hired a, a company to do that. So that's not something we did in-house. Um, we contracted that out, but right now we have a um, VR or I guess a designer in-house that is starting to create this type of content um, within the company. And I think our hope is to sort of grow that. Um, I'll have to check and get back with you after. I, I think I know what it is, but I don't want to say it and then it's wrong, so. Do you find that a lot of sources are willing to participate in videos, like with that family? I I'm sorry, can you say that again? Do you find that a lot of your sources are willing to participate in videos or 3D or virtual reality? Yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of interest in it, and I think because it is shiny and new kind of thing, and so they're really, they want to be part of sort of this next generation, so we, I don't believe we've had any um, pushback on that. How do you make a decision um, on where you're going to bring those resources? Because obviously a project like that is sure. much longer tail. Um, how do you stop the urge to do everything in this way yes. or to do nothing this way? So that is above my pay grade, but I do get to recommend you know, when things should, when we should focus on certain projects like this one, for example. Um, because there is a reason to, right? So there's either a business opportunity or there is an engagement opportunity. And so that is my role in digital, is to make those recommendations. Now, whether or not they take it, it's another story. But so far, it's been good. Oh, I had a question just about, it's a little similar to that, around workflow. Like, how long did that project take and how early in the process were you guys brought on? Sure. Like, when, I, I assume it came from a reporter from Des Moines that came to it you. Just, what was that yeah. workflow like in the time, like, from in, inception to launch? How long did that so take? So, I can't speak to um, the actual, how, when the content was created. I just know that when we were engaged. And so, um, I think that it took about five months for this to be created, at least on our end. Um, and then, unfortunately, our team specifically was sort of brought on in the middle because a lot of it was, it was constantly changing, right? Um, and so what we did was we tested it. Um, so there was, for example, a time where when we put on the Oculus, um, the first thing I saw was blank. And so the designer was like, you have to move your head. And so I was like, well, why would I move my head? Why don't you show me what it is you want me to see first rather than prompt me to move my head? because and A, there weren't any prompts to move my head. Somebody had to tell me, right? So little things like that are where, is where we can help out and sort of tweak. And so, you know, this wasn't 100% perfect. Nothing really is. So we're, con we're continually testing it to sort of optimize what works and what doesn't. Um, I'll just repeat the question for those on the streaming audience. So how was the rollout? And sure. Um, I believe that it went out print first. Like they did some marketing about it. Um, and then it went uh, live on the desktop and on the mobile platforms. And then again, it was shown at um, an ONA, like the demo. So I have a workflow question too. So in general, maybe for that project and maybe just in general, sure. um, do you have a sense of the breakdown between kind of that non-digital, the analog work, the planning, the, 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 the shooting of the, the assets, that kind of stuff, versus the digital? Is it 50-50? Is it 80-20? Um, right now, maybe it is, I'd say 50-50, because I feel like it's a lot of back and forth. So they'd shoot the video, and then they'd watch it, they'd edit it, and say, no, this actually doesn't work. You know, they start to string things together, and then they go back and make tweaks. Um, so it's hard to really say, but I feel like it's 50-50. I have a question here. Um, as the user advocate, 
what are the things that you think news organizations and your own organization most often fail to consider when considering the user's point perspective? I think oftentimes where we fail is really thinking about the application of whatever experience it is we're trying to convey, right? We have to think about, like, what I think we do well is that we empathize with a user, right? And we do that just, I think, intrinsically. We have that in us, but also because we have years of observation of how different, of how people, so there are, like, baseline behaviors and then how say gender or age behave differently with whatever it is that we're trying to present to them. So I always think or I always ask about the goal. What is it that you're trying to do and what, who is it that you're trying to reach? And so by understanding that, then we can sort of start to plan um, how to present that. But oftentimes, you know, as you know, in a corporate environment, you try to get things out to market. Like, we have to just be out there. We have to be quick. Um, and so you do that, and that's just par for the course. But I think the good thing about it is to learn from what went well and what didn't, and then try to inject that in your next project. Hi, Dresden. How are you? Hey, Jody. Um, so first I want to say, great job. Gannett is really innovative. This is some really great stuff. Um, so this was obviously the first, and, and kind of playing off of what you just said about building from that, are there have there been or are there plans for other experiments or um, VR things that they're doing? And how do you sort of do intake and vetting of what makes sense to, to do a big kind of VR thing versus just regular storytelling? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so right now it is, I think I can say this because it went live, the, the Cincinnati Reds experience is available now. So we worked with, um, with them to come up with another 360 in VR experience. Uh, we followed the team and we made it feel like what it would be like to be in a batting cage, um, that kind of thing. And I think it's, it's actually an ongoing story. So it's not just the beginning of the VR. They're going to keep adding layers to it. Um, and then after that, I think that we really have to sort of take a step back a little bit and really um, learn the tool itself because again technology is changing so quickly that what we did for this is obsolete so you know um, Sarah brought up the cardboard uh, we're working with that because you know in, or in order to reach the masses you need to be able to have it on currently your mobile phone right that's the way to reach um, and so we're working with you know potentials on what we can do on the mobile device um, me again. I was just wondering, do you, um, what does your user testing process look like? And do you have a fixed idea of how long an experience is going to last when you're putting it together? Like, did you make a shorter version of the Harvest of Change? Because there's so much media, obviously, inside it. Yeah, so, well, I think that they catered um, a lot of what's seen based on the platform. So, like, what's seen on the desktop um, may be a little longer than, say, for example, the 360 videos or whatever the case may be. But as far as user testing, um, I'm sorry, you asked, like, what our process was? Um, so we are, we partner with a vendor to find us a panel. And again, once we find out what the goals are from our stakeholder, we recruit through that panel um, essentially a subset of what we think the audience is for whatever product they want to test. Um, really, it doesn't take that much. It just takes five people to have some significance because you will see patterns of behavior. Um, and then we apply that to, you know, we, we share the findings and we go from there. Okay. Tristan, thank you very much. Thank you.